Welcome back to DIY with Dave. In this video, I wanted to talk about one of my favorite woods to work with, and that is maple. Now, maple trees are, are some of my favorite trees. You probably even have one in your front yard, maybe in your neighborhood at the very least. They're very popular ornamental trees. They're very slow growing. They can get very large with the right conditions, and they can be very pretty, especially in the fall when they turn red and gorgeous. But one of the reasons that I really enjoy it is because there's so much variety. You can go from a really light to a really dark and everything in between. Oh, you have so many looks. I'm actually in the process of building some drawers for my kitchen and um, I'm using hard maple to do that. And when I looked at the maple pieces that I had, I was really surprised at all the variation. And so I wanted to talk about that and talk about other types of variation that you can see in maple. There's a lot of different varieties or a lot of different species of maple that's out that are out there. So it can be anything from like a box elder tree to a sycamore to a sugar maple. Those are all different types of maple. But when we talk about lumber, it's really split into two different categories. The first category of maple is a hard maple. And hard maple is essentially the sugar maple that is used to get maple syrup. It's a fairly common tree here in Western Pennsylvania where I live and kind of throughout this area in, into Canada, hence the uh, maple leaf of Canada. The other type of maple that you'll see is what's called a soft maple. And it's essentially everything else. It's essentially everything else that isn't hard maple. Now, aside from the hard maple and soft maple, there can also be a lot of different nicknames or, or, or names for different types of grain patterns or varieties or characteristics in the wood. So you may have heard of uh, fiddleback maple or flame maple, curly maple, bird's eye maple, uh, ambrosia maple, country maple, rustic maple, uh, what else am I missing? <laughs> There's plenty of others out there, quilted maple. And all of these really refer to different characteristics of the wood. They refer to, uh, sometimes they can be caused by how the wood grows or how it's cut or how it's stored or dried. Um, and so I wanted to talk about some of these varieties and give you examples as to what they look like. Now, as I mentioned, I'm building some drawers and I'm building these drawers out of hard maple. The first piece I have right here is what's called a clear maple. This is generally the most desirable maple that you'll see. It's uh, very clear, uh, meaning it's very light, a white, almost off-white or cream color. And this is what people pay a premium for. This is what people really want uh, with maple. They want it to be very, very clear, very, very light. And uh, so you'll see a lot of cabinets that are built out of this kind of maple. The interesting thing about it though, is that when you look at kind of a cross section of a, a maple tree, you'll find two types of wood. You'll see a darker center layer and then a much lighter outside layer. The outside layer is called sapwood and the inside layer is called heartwood. In most other hardwoods, the most desirable lumber comes from the heartwood. And it has certain characteristics. So for example, in cherry, the heartwood is usually the, the most dark, deeper red color, and the outer layers are much lighter. With walnut, it's the same thing. The inner layers are much darker and the outer layers are much lighter. In fact, in the walnut bench that I built, one of the pieces of wood has kind of a cross section of heartwood and sapwood, and you can kind of see that here. The other interesting thing about maple is that the sapwood of a maple tree is generally much larger than the sapwood you would find in other hardwoods. And so you'll find a lot more of that light colored wood than you would the dark wood. But I do have an interesting example right here. And this is a piece where you can see the sapwood is here and the heartwood is here. So this is a piece that actually has both the sapwood and the heartwood. This piece of wood right here is all heartwood. And you'll see it's much darker when you compare it to the uh, lighter uh, clear maple, it's a much darker color. Now, maple can actually even go much darker than this. This is honestly a pretty light piece of, of dark maple. Here's some examples of some pieces of maple that I've used before that are much darker. Um, from there, you'll have other types of maple. This one, for example, it's kind of a messy color, has lots of different colors in the grain pattern, some of them darker, some of them lighter. Um, looks like there might be some spalting in here too. This is an example of what you would call like a rustic maple or country maple. Um, and it can come from, from any part of the tree really. In fact, in this picture of the cross section, you'll see kind of these rays that come out. A lot of that you can see in the wood as well with some of these kind of darker pieces. Another interesting piece I have is what's called spalted maple. 
Now spalting are these dark colors you can see here. On the side you can actually see it pretty well right there. What the spalting is, is essentially the wood has decayed a little bit and there's some fungus that has, has gotten into the wood and, and decayed it um, and started the decaying process anyway. And the interesting thing about this piece is that it's actually the edge of the wood. So this is where you know the wood was cut. They, they painted it to kind of seal in the grain before they dried it. Um, and so what happened was some water got in at some point, some moisture got in and started the decaying process of this wood and created that, that kind of pattern. Here's another piece too. These are actually from the same board. This is actually a little more dramatic. You see here also on this side, this is also on the end. And so some people really, really like those dark streaks. And I've seen pieces of wood where the entire piece of wood is all spalted. Uh, some people really desire that. They think it's really interesting. Um, it doesn't harm the wood at all. The, the process of, of kiln drying it sterilizes the wood. So there really isn't any problem there. Uh, here, here's another example. Again, this is kind of a country maple that has a lot of those streaks. There's another type of maple that's called ambrosia maple, which has some of these same types of streaks, but it's actually caused by an ambrosia beetle. Uh, and they're much more dramatic than you'll see here. I have here another example of what's called bird's eye maple. And this is probably my favorite variety of maple. Uh, this is a piece of furniture that my father-in-law made for my wife and me. And he used a really gorgeous piece of bird's eye maple in the very center. Uh, you can see all these little patterns in the wood that look like bird's eyes, which is why they call it bird's eye maple. They don't actually have a, a concrete scientific reason for why the bird's eye maple forms. They think it's actually due to unfavorable growing conditions. And a lot of times uh, they say that it's because of kind of starts of like branches that, that for whatever reason uh, kind of break off. So it's, it's just like a bunch of starts of branches that create that really interesting, really gorgeous grain pattern. You'll definitely pay a premium for that. Those boards tend to be very, very expensive. Bird's eye maple is much more common in hard maple. You rarely see it in soft maple, but there's other types like quilted maple that are more common in soft maple. So it just depends upon uh, what type of maple it is. Another type of maple is uh, striped maple or curly maple or, or tiger maple. It's all basically the same thing. In the Lego table that I built for my kids, one of the pieces of veneer that I used had some of that pattern. Really gorgeous kind of curls and rolls in it. Um, it wasn't the entire board, but it was a piece of it and I thought it was really gorgeous. So those are a lot of different types of maple boards. Um, again, maple is great because of all that variety. It's, it's a great wood to, to work with, to build furniture out of, to build cabinets out of, to build tables out of. Um, I've used maple for a lot of different things. I have another cabinet project that I'm almost finished with that I used maple for the top and stained it, and then also used maple for all the drawers and painted them. And so it's a very versatile wood, very great for a lot of different things. So I'd love to know what's your favorite kind of maple? Have you worked with maple before? Um, have you come across some real finds? Have you found some really beautiful wood and, and some of the things you've done? I'd love to see pictures even. But I hope you liked this video. I hope you learned something. I hope you found it interesting. If you did, be sure to subscribe to my channel. Be sure to like this video, share it with your friends, and uh, we'll see you in the next one.